let's back up a bit and, and say what uh, what does interest you on AI? What do you think are the exciting things for you personally? Uh, maybe more than for you know the field in general. Well, well I guess for me personally, to, I mean, I think the most interesting and and most legitimately frightening, but also most legitimately impactful thing is when machines learn how to improve themselves and not just learn within a structure set up by humans, but to actually build new structures and learn how to learn better and and so on. So as soon as machines can kind of start bootstrapping their intelligence, um, then that potentially becomes extremely interesting because it's no longer governed by the sort of speed of human understanding and development. Whereas right now it kind of is. So a uh, window just popped up right in front of me. Sorry about that. I have to deal with it. Okay. For some reason, my machine decided to get a picture of this right now. What can I say? Yeah. So, for instance, yeah. yes, the, the window that just popped up is, for instance, a CAD program. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm still calling it shapes, but I'm putting the shapes together and so on. But very soon, I'm sure that I'll just tell it goals, like, you know, I want these two things to be held apart with this force. Or, and, you know, already there are some CAD programs that do that. and then. So one of the things happening is even the design of our society, the design of our machines themselves, is much less connected to human understanding. I mean, it's already true. So, and nobody really understands in detail how the internet works, for instance. Yeah, they understand parts of it. Um, you know, they understand globally the big picture, but it does things that nobody would have predicted. And, and so our relationship to it becomes more like a relationship with a natural object. Mm -hmm. But nobody's really in charge of its design. Um, one, one thing that Marvin um, talks about in Society of Mind is, is that uh, learning is one part of it, but, but um, uh, learning still need, needs goals, and the goals will be set by humans. But um, uh, what you just said about the internet developing uh, de developing uh, structures that people don't quite understand um, seems to imply that um, uh, that that even if we build things with certain goals, then uh, then at, at some point things uh, can start structures can start evolving that are not um, uh, are not yeah. focused or directed by those goals. Yep, yep. That's, that's true, true. and we already have that problem. So we already have that problem, for example, with uh, organizations. So when you start a company, you may have certain goals, but after a while, the company has its own goals, or the NGO has its own goals, or the country, yeah, the political organization. And so things have goals, that, you know, they develop goals of their own, which are not necessarily the goals of the designer, they're emergent goals. And in fact, in many ways, those things have end up having goals that are pretty contrary to the goals of individual humans. So they naturally want to perpetuate themselves and gain more power and so on. So I think some of our concepts like democracy are getting strongly corrupted by the fact that we've made these entities which have, in some sense, superhuman capacities. Um, you know, in other sense, subhuman capacities, <laughs> but, you know, that, that, you know, there are already very powerful actors in our lives. Um, and so, and the same way that, you know, we try to, we try to control them with only partial success. I think probably the same thing will happen with our machines. I think that's a very good analogy. That seems to imply that we should be studying these large organizations uh, and how they f function and how we can direct them in order to 
uh, be able to, I mean, that more, that will happen more and more. Yeah, yeah that might be a prediction. And maybe the ways that we can, I mean, we, of course, they're different in the sense that we have the different control knobs to use. I mean, because they're made of organizations of people, they have to be the control with the tools that influence people like leadership and you know persuasion things like you know incentives like you know, those are those are ways that that we try to influence those organizations but um we'll probably have to use some of those tools but we'll probably have to use some different tools to influence the machines so i mean i i certainly believe that it's going to create problems for us but I also believe that it's it's probably going to be the thing that solves a lot of our problems too, if that makes sense. Yeah, or so, changes the types of problems that we're confronted with. Yeah, it changes, and it's fundamentally going to change who we are, mm -hmm. just like civilization has changed who we are. Right. And some ways for the better, some ways for the worse. But, um, so I do believe, and, and that's why I do believe we're going through a kind of a revolution that I sort of make the analogy to the Enlightenment. I think the Enlightenment, you know, really kind of created the idea of the individual as, you know, the ultimate creation, act of creation, and the, the individual is the autonomous agent that, you know, could perceive and build and understand everything. And I think that the... What we're going through now is something I call the entanglement. I read your post on the the new Media Lab blog. Yeah. yeah. The entanglement. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think that that's but it's all about connections. <laughs> and you know, as we become much more connected with this, it's you know, it's this connected emergent thing that makes these, for instance, these moral decisions. Um, it's the, the, the things that have goals or combinations of people and machines and you know, tied together by much tighter communication and much more connectivity. And so it, it brings us into a different kind of world that, you know, is potentially much more intelligent in the sense that, you know, it's computationally much more robust. It can face tougher problems. It's not necessarily more, more intelligent in all dimensions, so. though. Well, and, so. and intelligence is uh, is potentially very different from, um, uh, I don't know, what is that? Good, <laughs> good or positive or um, human or good for humans or... No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and in fact, I think... Um, I guess it's only optimism that makes me believe that there's some positive progress in this. <laughs> um, I don't see any guaranteed, um, in, you know, it becomes these kind of existential questions, but I don't think there's any guarantee that something smarter would be better. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and it might be that uh, it's also in whose eyes better. I mean, I think, you know, if you, it's sort of like in Brave New World, when you took the people from the past, they thought the future was much worse. But the people from the future looked back at the past and thought it was much worse. And certainly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be transported back and have to live at any time in the past. Yeah, m me either. I mean, especially as a woman, as a woman, frankly. Right. Well, that, that's a perfect example. Yeah. So, I sort of do believe in the the Martin Luther King comment that you know, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. And I do believe in sort of slow moral progress. Uh -huh. um, but it's, um, and and I would hope. But in some sense, I think what the question is, why does it bend toward justice? And and my hope is that truth has a certain, you know, that there there is an underlying truth to things, and the things that are resonant with the truth survive for longer than things that are counter to the truth. 